the optic nerve thing. So essentially the optic nerve is something that connects your eye uh, with uh, various aspects of the brain, right? So um, essentially we've got these eyeballs, which are actually a piece of the brain, which are, I can't remember which trimester, but at some stage during your, um, the um, being the whole birth cycle, um, basically these two pieces of brain get pushed out into the um, outside of the skull during this. So they're actually a piece of your brain. Um, like literally right here, <laughs> I can touch my brain, <laughs> uh, but I don't want to touch my eyeballs. But anyway, um, ultimately these pieces of brain are connected through what we call this optic nerve, right? So this optic nerve sends signals based on what we see, what we observe and what happens around us sends signals and also colors and textures and patterns, everything. Um, and the amount of light we get, everything, right? All these signals are being sent into pieces of the brain. So you mentioned forward momentum, right? So what happens is when and our peripherals have something that's moving from forward to backwards, meaning like usually if you're on a walk or on a run, right, things are moving past you, right? Or if you're doing what's called EMDR, which is eye movement desensitization reprocessing, so it's a therapy where you just move your eyes laterally from side to side, right? You're actually processing um, uh, information in a very different way when that happens, right? So I'll start with the first one, which is when things are moving past you. When things are moving past you, you're generating what we call forward momentum, right? Um, and especially if you're physically moving forward, what's going to happen is you trigger dopamine. Do you remember me speaking about how dopamine is motivation and reward? If you're, if you're on the right path, or the brain thinks it's on the right path, it's making forward momentum, you trigger this dopamine as well, right? So if you want to actually shift your state, a great thing to do is just simply go for a walk. Like literally just go for a walk, not looking at your phone, but actually looking at noticing things around you and, and noticing as, you're, as things are moving past you actually starting to shift your state and you'll be able to think more clearly because you're shifting you're increasing the amount of dopamine in your system at that point in time right which is a neurotransmitter and this uh, dopamine is um, making you feel probably a bit more empowered a bit more confident so therefore a bit more safe and a bit more at ease so it's gonna be easier to process things and emdr eye movement desensitization reprocessing when you move things side to side it was showing that um, a specific region in the brain called the amygdala which is a fair region in the brain it gets triggered when you have anxiety it gets triggered when you're afraid when you're worried right? now um, especially when people are experiencing or re-experiencing trauma um, the amygdala gets very strongly activated so what they found is that when people were um, had the amygdala triggered and they um, and they learned to uh, while they're thinking about the trauma or like a specific experience it needs to be specific and they're practicing EMDR so lateral eye movement from side to side they actually start to interestingly enough quieten the amygdala so they stop to feel as fearful or as um, afraid during the experience so they've done various studies on this and those various studies that have shown that hasn't really worked but of course there's many studies that have so there's definitely um, possibilities there with the EMDR as well. So yeah, really interesting how um, sight, because we're really designed as um, primitive beings to um, assess things a lot by sight, whereas dogs, you know, are really designed to really notice smell, right? Bats to really notice, really notice sounds, right? Um, so ultimately, um, you know, different uh, species have different ways of um, processing most of their information and for us a big majority of it is sight so that's why this whole what you mentioned the optic nerve concept of like where the eyes are connected to the brain um, yeah, a lot of the information that we collect from what we view is um yeah going to trigger the brain in different ways that's crazy i mean when you when, when you told me that i was like and I, i've just realized something that i never knew now you've just given the, me the answer without knowing it whenever i've been depressed i've been obsessed with going in car rides yeah yeah and this is the reason why, because it makes you, it, it just stops it, right? Because you forward momentum. That's crazy. Um, yes, exactly. I want to talk about. Let's touch very briefly. Touch on. Um. Very quickly, do breathing techniques. Yes. Please. Yes. So there's many, many breathing techniques. So many different possibilities are, um, with what we can do there. Oh, sorry. Um, Before we go to breathing, Kieran, you need to be running for an hour to stop logical thinking. Wait, what's this? Sorry? I think in one of your TikToks, you said we need to be running uh, yeah. for an hour. Yeah, so basically over um, the period of about an hour, we, we start to quieten 
uh, our prefrontal lobe, which is basically this region around the forefront of our forehead um, of the brain, which is what you could call maybe the control center. Um, you could call it the logical thinking, the critical thinking part of the brain, where we're basically taking information and then we're trying to logically deduct it or dissecting it or whatever, you know, to sermon it essentially, right? So um, this is where a lot of overthinking occurs as well. Um, so people will take a piece of information and try to think about um, different solutions and it gets very overwhelming. So when we quiet in this part of the brain, um, what's happening is we're just, um, due to the GABA that's produced, which is quieting certain connections to that part of the brain, what happens is we start to think a little less. Now, running for about an hour, cycling for about an hour, um, doing exercise for about an hour in general, right, will produce this. Of course, you know, there's a couple of drinks, but however, that does have various other consequences. Um, but um, many things that will produce this, um, yeah, GABA experience. And one of them is definitely forward momentum, uh, even just going for a walk for an hour, um, you know, is um, yeah, a great way to trigger a completely different state.